I surrender to the Almighty, my mind, speech and body. Manakam, we are here to read Tirukkural, which is one of the important books left behind by our Tamil ancestors. So far, we have seen quite a bit of introductory material. We have seen what is Aram, which is the natural order of nature, uh, the Pramanams, which are ways to measure the truth, the Pudartam and the Varnashrama Dharmam. We have also seen who is Parimila Ragar and why we have chosen his commentaries to understand Tirukkural. We also understand that humans are beings with six senses and we have a basic understanding of the concept of rebirth, karma and maya. We have also seen the overall structure of the book. There are three main sections called Pal, the Arathu Pal, Purut Pal and Imbattu Pal. Today, we will enter the commentaries of Parimel Aragar. All books are not for everyone. A book on physics may be the best in the field, but it is not of much use to someone who is interested in, let's say, the human body. So instead of reading the entire book and then realizing that this book is not for me, we have a section of the book in the beginning that says what this book is all about and who is the intended audience. And this section of the book is called as the preface. And the word Pairam is used in Tamil. Tamil grammar says that a Pairam should contain 11 elements. What is the book talking about? Who is the intended audience? Who can teach this book? Where was the book released? And under whose authority? And so on. Now the Pairam can be written by the author of the book or by any other educated person. Tiruvalluvar, as I had mentioned earlier, does none of this. He writes four chapters and he placed them in the front and said, these four chapters will make the preface of the book or the Pairam. He said that these four chapters will give the gist of the rest of the book. And these four chapters make the first yell of the Arathipal. It is called as the Pairavial. Pairavial. And we are about to enter this Pairavial. So now we'll go to Parimiraga's commentaries. Now a person writing the commentary need not have any new information to tell the audience. His job is to offer explanations for the original work. Also, there is no need to write a preface for the commentaries. But Parimiraragar does something new. Now, he walks in the path of his Guru Tiruvalluvar. So, just like his Guru, he does something new. He writes a preface for his commentaries. This is not a common practice. This is probably one of the uh, very few instances where a commentator writes a preface for his commentaries. And just like his Guru, Parimiraragar is a man of few words. But each and every word is chosen carefully. Now these people don't throw words around randomly. They choose their word consciously. And today we will start with Parimiraragar's preface. Um, this is the book. And, and this here is the preface of this entire book. In Tamil, this section is called as Urai Pairam. Urai Pairam. Urai means commentaries and Pairam is in a preface. So Urai Pairam means the uh, preface for the commentaries. Now here in this section, Parimaragar is setting the stage for us to enter the Arathupal and we are going to start with that. Okay, so let's start. Um, humans have six senses and the sixth sense is called as a mind or the manam. I have already mentioned that manam differentiate the animals from humans. One of the things that humans can do that animals cannot do is that humans can think and analyze what is best for them. We can think and analyze things rationally. We are able to see what is better for us and we plan our lives accordingly. A cow or a dog cannot plan its life to become a human in the next birth. But a man can plan his life and become a deva. How is this possible? By using our buddhi. Buddhi is that part of the mind that analyzes and concludes information. 
Because of this unique ability of man, he started thinking if there is a higher form of existence. He searched for ways to reach that state of existence and he successfully figured it out. He discovered that there is something called Padam, Padam which is a higher state of existence than his current state. And he used his mind and analyzed what is the best way to get there. And he went down that path and he acquired the ability to reach Padam. He found out that there's something called Indira Padam where there's only happy experiences. There's something called Brahma Padam, Vishnu Padam and Shiva Padam and so on. He found out that by living life in a certain manner in the human birth, um, you can reach the Padams. He found this out and he reached them. But he wasn't happy or content. Because even though the Padams were a better uh, way of living than this human existence, it wasn't permanent. He worked really hard and acquired the Indra Padam and Vishnu Padam, but he had to come back after his time was over. After a certain time, the experience got over because the karma vinay, uh, which give the happy experiences, once they were exhausted, the time in the padam was also over. So it wasn't sufficient. But he's intelligent. He thought, where is a state of endless happiness? Now we all desire that, don't we? The experience should not be exhausted and the place of that experience should also be ever present. He searched hard and found that also. And he named that place as Vidu. Vidu. Vidu literally means home in Tamil. Now it comes from the root word Vidudal. Vidudal. Vidudal means to leave. Because as soon as we enter our home, we leave behind all the other identities that we carry in the society. We may play many roles. In the society as a teacher a boss an actor a performer and so on so the place where we leave behind all the acquired identities is referred to as Vida. so even in the journey of the weir our final destination seems to be a place of endless happiness and it is a place where we drop all our acquired identities and that place is also called as Vida. Parimalanika says that in Vida, the happiness is not destroyed and the place is also not destroyed. Is it possible to have such a kind of existence where when we reach that place, we will have never ending happiness? Parimalaya says, yes, it's possible. But one of the laws that we know in nature is that all things that undergo creation will undergo destruction. Then how can we be a place of indestructible happiness and all that? Parimaraga says that there is something called God who is always present. God is neither created nor destroyed. And one of the descriptions we use to describe God's qualities is bliss. So Veda, he says, is nothing but the feet of God. So when we touch him, we can reach never-ending happiness. So Veda is possible and we all get there eventually after several births. So, Marimaraga says, man has found the presence of these two. That is, there should be no end for happiness and no end for the place. And that place, he says, is called as Vida. And another name for Vida is Mukti. Mukti. Now, only man has a capacity to plan and execute the plan. The path to such a place called Vida is Aram. Purul and Inbam. These are terms that we have already come across. Aram we know is the order of nature. Purul is nothing but wealth. And Inbam means pleasure. So Parimayaraga says that when you travel in the path of Aram, Purul and Inbam, then you will definitely reach Padam and finally to the place called Vide or Mukti. Man understood this and he reached it. And this is the first line of the book. I will read the uh, beginning of the Tamil verse. Indiran mudaliya irayavar padangalum andam il inbathu alivil vedum. You may not understand the Tamil verse, but whatever I explained so far is contained in this one line. Next, Parimiraga says that 
neri arindu this is very important neri he word he uses the word neri neri means a certain proven method that will work for all regardless of who uses it uh, that is what we call as a scientific method see if i throw an apple it will definitely fall to the floor gravity will make sure that it happens whether a boy throws or a girl throws or a dog throws we all know that when an object is thrown it will definitely fall to the earth so this is called as neri that is a well established science that will work for everyone see some people get rich by trying and working hard and making a plan and executing the plan whereas some other people win the lottery and get rich now will this person who won the lottery be able to teach someone else how to become rich by participating in the lottery no can we say that the lottery method is a proven method and it will give you success each and every time you try it no we cannot call the lottery method as a neri clearly not on the other hand when someone has a good plan and executes his plan and makes an effort in accordance with his plan to become rich and actually becomes rich he can tell others how to get rich he can show others if you go in this way you can make a lot of money this is called neri vidu also is like that some people will accidentally reach vidu or mukti and uh, they will not be able to guide others so parimayaga says this book is for someone who is ready to approach the subject in a scientific manner that is this is for someone who is willing to put in some conscious effort and who is willing to execute a plan so for someone who is willing to take on such an effort and is searching the way to attain padam and vidu he says i will show you the way to padam and vidu and you will reach your goal and that is urudi urudi he uses the word called urudi urudi means a guarantee or a promise see these are the words of a person with yoga kachi or the yogic vision and uh, not some random author if you can recall i had mentioned in the video on pramanam the yoga kachi is where a person has a capacity to detach the uir or the intelligence from this body at will and observe the things in nature without the use of any of our instruments like the eyes ears nose mouth and all that and uh, that is yoga kachi so these are the words of such kind of people and we can see that uh, their words have stood the test of time their ordinary words itself is a promise there is really no need for a person like parimir alagar to use the word urudi or promise so when he chooses to use this word called urudi we should understand the strength of the truth they are trying to convey so parimir alagar continues he says in order to show us that path to padam and vidu our ancestors have taken four topics they are aram porul inbam and vidu which together we have seen is called as the purudartham i have explained this in the previous videos so he gave all of what i have spoken in the past few minutes uh, in this one simple line i will read it indiran mudaliya irayavar padangalum andamil inbathu alivil veedum neri arindu eidudar kuriya maandarku urudi ena உயர்ந்தோரான் எடுக்கப்பட்ட பொருள் நான்கு அவை அறம் பொருள் இன்பம் வீடு என்பன ஸோ ஐ வில் சமரைஸ் ஆல் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஒன்ஸ் அகேன் யூ ஆர் அ பீயிங் வித் சிக்ஸ் சென்சஸ் தேர் ஃபோர் யூ ஹாவ் த எபிலிட்டி டு அனலைஸ் அண்ட் கம் டு கன்க்ளூஷன்ஸ் யூசிங் யுவர் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் அண்ட் சச் அ மைண்ட் கேன் ஐதர் யூஸ் இட்ஸ் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் டு க்ரோ அண்ட் பி அ பெட்டர் பர்சன் ஆர் ஸ்லிப் டவுன் அண்ட் பிகம் அன் அனிமல் வாட் ஐ மீன் பை க்ரோ அண்ட் பிகம் அ பெட்டர் பர்சன் uh recently there was a news item which said that someone killed someone else because he was because he had parked his car in his parking space now uh, this behavior is not an indicator of becoming a better human this is declining to the level of animals we need to think this is my state today and tomorrow i will be a better person than what i was yesterday that kind of an attitude is called growing uh, to be a better person and only such a person who is willing to grow is considered as a human by tamils and the rest can be categorized as animals 
the height or pinnacle of such a growth is reaching padam not to not by accident but by planning and living as per the plan one can definitely attain the padam and even that is not satisfactory so humans reach vidya and only a human birth uh, that is blessed with six senses can do all of this for such a creature with six senses to plan and live in the said manner we need to understand four things and they are aram porul inbam and vidya and this is the first line of the book now forget never ending happiness even temporary happiness is not guaranteed today happiness is highly misunderstood and widely sought after we have been running up and down crossed oceans moved to different countries uh, we have tattooed and pierced and injected our bodies with all kinds of chemicals we have ran behind lust lusting behind humans and even animals these days we have ingested drugs fallen prey to alcohol killed animals and plants and we have tried so hard to fit in with the society we have hurt our loved ones kicked others to climb the corporate ladder of success squeezed ourselves to generate tons of money and spent it in ways that others can see that we have it all all we have done in search of happiness i don't know if we can look around and see if there's anyone who's truly achieved happiness at the end of it all we are living in an age where iconic people are falling into depression and committing suicide and dying a lonely death i think it's about time we admit the sad truth that as a human race we really don't know how to be happy so here in this line in parmela alga's introduction uh, it touched me deeply because here we have some great people showing us a way that guarantees 100% never ending happiness not ordinary happiness but a never ending one it does seem too good to be true but these are the words of a yogi and the words that have stood the test of time our ancestors have laid down um, these things as an instructional guide for our life that will work for all now that seems like the science of living so this made me pick up this book and read it and to this day it hasn't failed me and i hope it will be useful for you as well okay so we will end here and we will continue with the preface um thank you for listening nandri vanakkam